the demo. So what is Deep Insight? Deep Insight is a network monitoring solution. And uh, I like this analogy of the iceberg because most of the problems that are in, in your network today are submerged. And what you see is like probably 5 to 10% of them. With Deep Insight, we want to give you all this visibility. We want to answer to these foreground truth questions of telemetry and give you that fine grain visibility. This is an application that runs on uh, x86, so uh, there is no agent or any part of this application that runs on the switches. Um, allows for rich time analytics, has dashboards, has a modular architecture for scale out. Uh, you can deploy <coughs> these as a, as a single server appliance. So this is a, uh, one of the area where we did a lot of investment and we built a very efficient packet processing engine. So we can, the customer can start deploying this on a single server. And of course you can scale out if you grow beyond eight, 10 racks in your data center then definitely you can scale this out to multiple uh, appliances. Uh, of course, also runs on commodity servers, so we don't require any specific specialized servers here. Um, the contract and the southbound interface to the data plane relies on these INT telemetry reports and metadata coming out from the network. I mentioned about INT being open specified, also the INT report is open specified. So this, of course, gives flexibility to the customer to use Deep Insight. If they want to use something else, they can do that. We definitely want to keep an open interface there. When we scale out to multiple appliances type approach, or in this case, our virtual appliances, do they have some sense of master model? They communicate to each other. There's there no single yeah. master, et cetera. Yes, yeah, so it's a scale out model. And there is uh, fundamentally a, a synchronization on the storage side, on the state side. There are a number of these uh, protocols that uh, are stateful and are fully distributed that we use mm -hmm. internally. Northbound interface, we have a RESTful API. So this is for customers to integrate their network management tool. Deep Insight is complementary with existing network management. We do something very well, which is the network performance monitoring. We definitely don't have ambitions to do uh, network monitoring for management workloads or control planes. So the Northbound API is there to integrate and also to offer the customer the ability to build their own dashboards because people like to have unified dashboards so through the API you can extract the same data that is being uh, visualized through the Deep Insight UI. In the Deep, uh, deep Insight analytics part there, it mentions uh, anomaly detection. What is, do you have an example of a characteristic of an, uh, of an anomaly? Effect? Yes, so I'll, uh, in the demo I'll show it a little bit more in okay. detail, but, but fundamentally things like packet drops, things like high latency. Mm -hmm. These anomalies, we have a set of anomalies that are defined, predefined, and we also um, are going to expand this as we see more requests from customers. Thank you. There is also a vision for us, is like to give the ability to the customer to write their own anomalies. Mm -hmm. So this could be done simply like uh, through baselining, automatic baselining of uh, these applications, or just uh, with some type of meta language, so the customer can go and describe the anomalies and we can implement that on the appliance. Before we move on, I want to ask one more question about sure. analytics. Um, so you mentioned that you're doing real-time analytics. That's awesome, but what sets you apart from other companies who are doing real-time analytics? Yeah, so I think uh, what really differentiates us is um, the ability of using this Truly, we are the first product that uses this inbound network telemetry. And, and uh, getting to the packet level, and I'll explain in a second how we do that, uh, getting to the packet level, it's very, very important to find even the microscopic issue. Think about a microburst, the last 10 microseconds that you want to detect in real time and you want to evaluate the impact on. If you have, you know, existing telemetry, all of this telemetry is based on things like NetFlow or control plane telemetry that is pushed uh, from the device. The granularity that this technology has is not good enough to detect these more problems. So I think we are, where we truly differentiate is in the granularity, is in the accuracy of that real-time telemetry. So is it fair to say that you're not just collecting you know, packets and then acting upon them, you're collecting metadata and even getting deeper you know, as you're tagging that stuff yeah. to characteristics that would be seen inside and outside of the packet structure? Correct. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, no, I think that's good. I think it would be good just, you know, conscious of the time that maybe we can go into the demo, and I think the demo I will. Demo. Uh, so, <laughs> so maybe we jump ahead a little yeah, bit so to the, the, the demo. Next, next is the demo. Know, just uh, want to give a quick overview of what are the capabilities. We do pattern latency tracking through inbound network telemetry. That's question number one of ground truth. We do that congestion analysis, which is question number four. So we don't just detect the problem. We allow you to do the root cause analysis of that congestion. But are we limited to root cause analysis or programmatic having it actually go and fix the problems for us? So it's no, like, that's hey, a we great, had a problem, we took yeah, care of it. Yeah, that's a great question. Today, we don't do that because we don't have uh, provisioning control over the network. But definitely, we can expose through the northbound API these anomalies, so you can subscribe to a specific anomaly, receive that anomaly. If you have a controller architecture, that can go and reroute around congestion or implement QoS policy so that you can fix the problem on the spot. So you're saying if I went all Tufino uh, chips inside of those switches, maybe I can make this a little more faster reality. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. That was, a, oh. gonna, that was gonna be my follow-up question earlier. I'm sorry, I know we're trying to get to the demo in the sake sure. of time, but What's the turnaround time when an anomaly is detected? What's the turnaround time from saying, here's an anomaly, because you guys are doing real-time analytics. Yeah. Here's an anomaly, because now somebody has to yeah. go in yeah. and do work. And do so, work. So what's, yeah. what's that notification look like? Great question. So uh, the, the anomaly report comes very quickly. It's basically, you know, light speed. It's generated from the ASIC and send to the analytic engine. It goes to maybe like a number of switches. So it's a, it's a matter of like sub microsecond or sub microsecond. That, so that does question. it integrate with ServiceNow or some other platform uh, that we can have that information fed That's into? a great yeah. question. So that's a use case that came up multiple times. Um, you can, through that pub sub system northbound API, mm -hmm. integrate this into ServiceNow. And if a specific packet drop happens, for example, a specific anomaly is triggered, you can create a ServiceNow ticket. But do you right. have native plugins to ServiceNow? No, so not, uh, not today. Uh, not at Slack. this point. Send a Slack yeah. message or SNMP yeah. trap. Yeah. Chat out. To, Email. To, yeah. Today we just offer RESTful APIs, right? But okay. that's, the, that's the definite future. And I mean, there could be plugins to some of the intent based systems, you know, from different you know, folks to be able to re resolve that as well, right? Sure. So, sorry to use a buzzword from <laughs> I don't know if that's your reaction. So just, but, uh, but, <laughs> but, uh, but yes, yeah. uh, but just that's the idea is to close the loop today. None of those are offered. It's, you know, just providing the raw data or the anomaly detection today. Just to close on the question, yeah. So as soon as you receive that anomaly, the, the, the basically the application needs to process it, which is like a matter of like milliseconds. Yeah. All right, let's get to so, the demo. So, packet drops is something we do very well. We'll see that in the demo. We also have a topology awareness. So, when there is a problem, we can surface this at the topology level. So, packet drops, congestion, that's a great workflow. Uh, you start from the topology, you see the problem, and then you have drilled down workflows to understand a little bit more about that. We have a full UI uh, with the reports and dashboards that you will see in the demo. And we also do data retention for historical analysis. So how, how much data retention we can do, it's up to how many, how much storage you can, uh, you can uh, have on the device. We require SSD because these queries are very high performance. And so with, uh, with a three terabyte SSD, which is the requirement today, you can store up to three days of data about this can be grown. Support archival, we shot this mouse, yeah. So let's do a demo here. <laughs> yeah, let's jump on the demo. <laughs> Great questions. So here we have, like, uh, uh, before we jump on the demo, I just want to show you kind of the topology of the demo. We have a leaf spine architecture here. The leaf uh, are the INT source and sync. The spines are the INT transit nodes. Uh, we have a vSphere virtualized environment. And in this vSphere virtualized environment, we uh, add uh, VLC servers and VLC clients. Uh, why we use VLC? We want to stream video. Mm -hmm. because video can be susceptible to packet loss. And in parallel, while we stream video, we have an iPerf, uh, which is an open source traffic generator, running in another VM that blasts TCP traffic to create artificially condition of a link saturation and network oversubscription. And we'll see the effect of this on the video. So we'll see the application 
affect the application disruption. Is the assumption QoS does not exist in this context? In this context, we don't have any QoS to okay. start. Yeah. So we'll, we'll have QoS and video and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. So we'll see. The QoS could be a remedy in this case mm -hmm. to fix the problem. And uh, <clears throat> we use Deep Inside, uh, we'll use Deep Inside to troubleshoot the problem. This is the topology, which is live and real. Uh, you, you know, if you came to the boot, uh, this was a live demo at our boot. At the top, you see uh, a, a spine, we use a Wedge 100, some of the white boxes, and as leaf, we use the Nexus 3K. So it's a great demonstration of the open architecture. We take a white box and a Cisco solution, they implement the same INT spec, they work very well together. Uh, of course, we have three servers for virtualization, and we have deep inside in the one server instantiation. So let's jump on the demo here. So that's the topology view that we have in the demo. And the first thing that we see in the topology is that we see these little numbers. What these numbers are telling us is the latency. That latency is measured in nanosecond. We have hardware timestamping that is done. So as soon as the packet enters the switch, we have a hardware timestamp. And when the packet leaves the switch, we do another timestamp. So we can calculate the transit latency across the switch. We have the measurement ability for uh, port to port as well. If I had a high latency of 727,000, you know, yeah. Response. I'll see from port to port transfer within the switch. Yeah, so in this particular case, what we are showing is the watermark latency was reached by all the flows and all the packets on the switch. But in the drill downward flows, you'll be able to see which flows and which ports port are experiencing port. the latency. Yeah. Excellent. Perfect. Yeah. That's a great segue yeah. into the next <laughs> yeah. segue. So we can also jump to um, a kind of a <clears throat> uh, more of a like packet drop level and see. This is a great way to see the packet drops, you know, exposed at the top level. So it's a kind of a high level view. Let's now log in into uh, the ESXi and launch the ESXi web console here and see <coughs> this application. So in this example, we have a video animation uh, that's being streamed by the VLC. This VLC has a little bit of diagnostic. You see highlighted uh, in red, in, uh, in blue here that there are some problems happening. So packets are coming late, and some frames are being lost. And by the way, when the frame is being lost, like in a couple of seconds, you'll see that counter increasing. So that, that TCP uh, microburst is definitely creating an issue for this application. And this is reflecting as bad quality video, and is detected by that application. So the application is telling something is going on, but as a network administrator, a network operator, I don't know what is the problem, right? So let's move now to the using Deep Inside to kind of find more about it. So in this case, the video stream yeah. is a UDP video. So it's RTS RTSP protocol. We are using UDP video. So <clears throat> we can go and select a specific protocol. In this case, we are going to select a UDP video and immediately see the profile for that particular flow of the latency over time. So this is a time series. And if you mouse over each of these latency bar, you see there are three colors. But you actually see only the purple color. That's because uh, each of the colors belong to a different switch. And the switch that is contributing the most to the latency is that switch that was marked as red in the topology. Is that 515 switch is basically contributing to to the latency with more than 147 microseconds. But let's say you have 600 racks of servers. How are we going to yeah. do that with the color? Yeah, so uh, if you have, <laughs> well, you know, absolutely. Well, there's lots have, of colors. <laughs> yeah, so if you, have, uh, if, you have, if you have a lot of servers, um, first of all, you know, as, as I mentioned, right, uh, this is where, you know, you can use a selective mechanism because, uh, yes, you can instrument uh, the, the telemetry for every packet, or you can be very selective on the specific application that you want to instrument. Um, initially, maybe you will run uh, this on every packet, on every server, on every rack, and to find where the issues are. But then going deeper, adding this capability for pattern latency tracking, this is something that you can do on demand as a troubleshooting workflow. Yeah. Uh, anyway, this is a big data problem, uh, doing this through the UI. It's one way of doing things. Uh, everything that key it's, ex it's exposed to the UI can also be fetched through APIs. So 
uh, you can automate and ingest a lot of these data uh, through the APIs as well. Uh, on that part, uh is this role-based type functionality so I can actually throw some of these applications up on a dashboard sitting on a big screen and it's like read-only so people yes. can just look at yes. it? Yes, yes, okay. absolutely. So you can mouse over the rest and see you know, what's going on, but fundamentally you consistently see that a 515 switch being the problem here. So the path, that's question number one. For this flow in this ECMP network, you see all the hopes that are being traversed in this network. And that's another, I can tell you, uh, you know, a little bit more maybe about what paths are being uh, used in your network. So let's jump now to another view, which is the even and anomaly view. In this even and anomaly view, what we track are like well-known predefined anomalies. Today the anomalies are around congestion, IO latency, path loops, and then we have a number of events. While the anomalies can create outages and application you know, degradation. The events are things that you want to keep in mind like because maybe relevant for you, like the, cre the sudden creation of uh, you know, lots of new flows. This may be a sign of some particular problem. So as you can see here, every, uh, every, every periodically you see these blue uh, buckets here. It means that this is the hyperf session the generating this TCP flows, and in correspondence of that, you see one of these high hope latency. It means that we are detecting as a result of that hyper, you know, uh, you know, microburst, we are detecting a congestion. So I imagine you have to fine tune this for your environment. Um, otherwise, you're going to have too many false positives. Um, but that almost requires somebody to constantly be working with it. And I did network analytics before network analytics was a thing years ago. Um, and one of the dangers was this type of software becoming shelfware because nobody had the time to keep up with it and keep tuning it. Yeah. So there are, that's where you know, I think the programmable data plane come, come to the rescue. Uh, there are a lot of these like, fine tuning and baseline that the data plane can do. For example, you know, <coughs> if you don't know what this, how to set these thresholds, sometimes you set them too low. And then you have like too many false positives. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you set them too high and you don't see the problem. One of the things that you can do with this programmable data plane is that you, you can run a, like baseline the latency directly in the data plane. So that trigger function that generates the report can be fine-tuned as you observe flows and packets going by. So that's a great way to you know, have put more intelligence there because humans are always, we don't know what we don't know. Right? So does yeah. Deep Insight have any type of root cause or analytics behind it? Because I could show you know, this to some engineers will get it, but other people will say, oh, high hop, high hop latency. I don't know what that means. Yeah. But you want to be able to, yes, yeah. this is what this means, and something you can uh, transact against it. Because you get the wrong person looking at it and they see anything that's uh, have a high number and they start yeah. freaking out. Yeah, tie it to remediation information. Yeah, yeah. so uh, we have documentation of what these anomalies are and what are the typical workflows that you need to do in order to fix this problem or you know, troubleshoot. Uh, and this is basically also uh, kind of one of the scenarios. I mean, when we talk with customers, some customer, hey, can you tell me when there is fragmentation? And we could generate another anomaly for that because we are in the data plane. Uh, can you tell me when there is TCP packet reordering? So those are all anomalies that we have not implemented today, but we hear from customers and definitely there could be a possibility. And it kind of addresses the point around having information, having knowledge of that information, yeah. but having intelligence as to what to actually do with that yeah. information. What to do with that, absolutely. So is, is the intent long term though? You guys really, I can't imagine you guys want to build that as a product. It's probably looking at others to partner with, right? Like, to, I know, guys. So, yeah. Oh, I, I, I don't think that. I mean, it's just my guess. So, I mean, it, so the, it's, the not deep, quarter, it's not quarter. It's not deep insight. The deep insight functionality, right, is something new that we don't see anybody, and it's kind of new, hand, part and parcel with INT is something new that hasn't mm -hmm. been supported sure. in band OEM and those kinds of things. So there's two modalities. One is either it can, you know, be rolled into a larger analytics framework or dashboard. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, I think the big theme and the hope is is how do you fix these problems? automatically, you know, from, from that side of things, or 
you know, like at least inform people what to go do to fix it. And sometimes that can actually be reprovision the data plane, come up with a new program for the data plane. Sometimes it's just a new configuration from, from that side of things. And so I think closing that loop, that's the, that's the long-term vision. But what we're trying to do right now is provide information that hasn't been able to be provided before because you could never get to that packet by packet, well, real-time side of things. I've seen some products try to do this and they're doing it through tabs and VTabs and stuff like that. Yeah. They, and they do a horrible job of it. So I mean, I, I, that's why you don't see a lot of it going on because the op the options for it and implementations were really bad, and then they well a lot of those companies don't exist anymore. Yeah. And I like to see the success around it because you have the ability to ingest in real time, right. you know, at a, a major level to actually be able to use that sure. information reliably and thus get intent, and we can drive it to root cause and make it actionable yeah. and programmatic, ideally. So the whole purpose of software defined networks are we don't have to do anything; things should just work at that point and then dynamically change. Yeah. Right? And so I think this is closing the loop of that last piece of information that wasn't available. Mm -hmm. And so now it's about integrating it into, if it's a VMware solution, it could be VR ops or something like that, or vCenter from that side. If it's more on the network side, it could be into Cisco's framework or somebody else's provisioning framework or yeah, service now. sounds good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a few, a few more, more things that I want to show you, and uh, you know, I will close with a demo here. So uh, there are like, so I can, of course, uh, operate the system in real time. Well, and you, when you operate in real time, you see all this like anomalies unfolding as we receive data from the network. That's our southbound interface. If we click on one of these high hope anomalies, what you can do is now you have these anomaly records. These anomaly records tells me a lot about it. So when that anomaly was generated, you have a timestamp, which flow was impacted, which application was impacted. So you can go and select now uh, specific protocols, for example, for, for the next level of troubleshooting. So <clears throat> here you have a certain number of filters, so you can go and select the anomalies that impact only UDP because you want to troubleshoot that RSTP flow, or you want, you want to select TCP if you know that you are experiencing issues related to TCP applications. In this case, we'll keep everything on, and what we are trying to do is only select the switch that we, constant, we consistently saw as creating problems, like latency and so on. And then go and select one of these anomaly records that is uh, basically giving us a very high hope latency. So we want to go in a, one of these congestion scenarios. So the next level of visibility you get is uh, for that switch, which is the 9515 switch. Can you tell me a little bit more about where that congestion is, and who is creating the congestion. If you remember question number four, which is, can you tell me more about it? So mousing over that, that graph will tell you, hey, I have my UDP flow. So that's the UDP flow, the RSTP flow, that in this case is a victim. And the TCP flow, that is that aggressor flow. So note that the time scale here, it's just microseconds, and sometimes sub-microseconds, right? So, uh, this is few microseconds of data, and this is something that you'll ne never be able to capture with taps or with NetFlow functionality. So this is some, I mean, talking about some of the unique things you can do, this is one of the unique uh, capabilities. Right. Of course, you can look now at this problem also at different time scales, and so uh, you can go and you know, see, <clears throat> uh, for example, multiple of these events do trend analysis, go to 10 millisecond scale, and then look at multiple of these events, go back to like a, a smaller time scale, zoom on this event, and see more of these problems, so um, more of these uh, specific issues. We also have a packet view, so we sequence packet, we use TCP pack sequence number, or, or we sequence the packet themselves, so we can also find out which packets were involved in this, in this congestion event. So the, the, the sequence number in this case is used as a signature. This is relevant for some customers like financials. They want to prove that a specific transaction, when, when didn't go through, uh, was dropped by the network or not dropped by the network. They need to prove that because they are financially liable sometimes about losing even a single packet. The last thing about the demo is uh, showing you this uh, packet drop analysis. So we can detect a number of packet drops. So you can drop a packet because an MTU check fail, because of a congestion. So these are all kind of the drop condition 
uh, that are exposed by the ASIC and these programmable data planes. So what we'll do is uh, click on this and see live now what's happening when I'm experiencing uh, these jumps into the, um, you know, packet drops. This is detected because this is real-time data coming from the switch. Every time there is an event, a jump on the packet loss, we detect that on deep inside because the network is sending us the drop reports. Similar things, we can see the effect of such a congestion like this one, for example, being detected in real time by, by, by the switch, by the deep inside. Yeah. And so this now you know, uh, give us the ability of uh, detecting very early these problems, um, implement con you know, scenarios where you go and fix these problems, um, you know, allocating more capacity, again, finding the offending application through that Q profile and implement things like QoS. And the last thing I want to show is that these drop reports are nothing like today you basically have counters that increment every time you have a pocket drop. Here you have you know, a lot of rich metadata. You have a timestamp that tells you when that packet was dropped, which flow was impacted by the packet drop. You know the switch, so you know where that ha problem happened, so you can triangulate the issue. You also have the drop reason, and you have uh, fundamentally also um, information about the ingress port of that packet. 